Summary of Speech Sounds by Octavia Butler The story of speech sounds happens after a worldwide disease that left most people who survived unable to speak, read, or write. Rye is taking the bus through Los Angeles when a fight breaks out between other people on the bus. Rye watches the fighting and tries to stay out of the way. He gets off the bus when the driver slams on the brakes to stop the fight. She waits on the curb and plans to get back on the train when the fight is over, even though she knows that trains are hard to catch and rarely work. Soon after, a man comes in a car, which is rare because there aren't many cars around because of a lack of fuel and skilled mechanics. The man and Rye talk about the fight on the bus using body language. She is shocked to see him in a police outfit because all governments and institutions have been broken up. The man throws a gas bomb onto the bus to stop the fight, which forces everyone off and onto the sidewalk. The bus driver and some of the other riders make angry gestures at the man, but he stands back and doesn't respond. Rye says this is typical of people who aren't as sick with the disease. The man makes more hand signals and asks her to leave with him. Rye thinks about how lonely she is because all of her close family members have died, leaving her so sad and alone that she's almost killed herself. She makes up her mind to leave with the man. Once they are in the car, the man introduces himself by giving Rai a black stone on a chain. This makes sense to her as a sign that his name is Obsidian. We meet her with a pin in the shape of wheat. To find out where Rai is going, Obsidian pulls out a map and tells her that he can read and write. This is a very dangerous secret to share in a world where people are angry and jealous of those who aren't disabled. After a short time of anger and envy, Rai tells Obsidian that she can still speak and hear spoken language. They have sex, and Rai feels better when they are close. She asks Obsidian to go home with her, and he says yes. The two of them then start driving back to Los Angeles. Odin slams on the brakes just as Rai is getting ready for the ride. A woman and a man with a knife run across the street in front of them. Obsidian gets out of the car to help and Rai follows. Both fall down after being stabbed by the woman. Rai tries to help the woman, but he knows she's already dead. The man grabs Obsidian's gun from his pocket and shoots him in the head as Obsidian bends over to see if the guy is dead. After shooting the man, Rai is left with the three dead bodies. As Rai thinks about what to do with the bodies and how to deal with his quick loss of obsidian, two children run out into the street and towards the dead woman. Rai sees that the children are running toward their mother. Rai starts to leave them but stops when she remembers she needs to bury obsidian. It's her choice to bury the woman too. Two kids yell at her as she grabs the body of the dead girl. One tells the other to be quiet. Rai is hoping that the sickness is over now that he knows the kids can talk. They decide to go home with her so she can watch over them and teach them. Is there anything they should be afraid of? She tells them who she is. Rai feels like she has a reason to live again all of a sudden, and she drives them home. About the author. Octavia Butler was born in Pasadena in 1947. She was raised by her mother and her grandmother after her father died. She learned about race discrimination by seeing how their white employers treated them badly. Butler read and wrote a lot as a child. She then went to Pasadena City College, took several UCLA extra courses, and finally, she got into the famous Clarion Workshop for science fiction writing. She was the first science fiction writer to win the MacArthur Fellowship, and her stories also won the Nebula and Hugo Awards. Butler wrote to speak out against racism, sexism, and classism in the world. She wrote main characters who didn't follow these rules and used their differences to their advantage instead of against them. She also used science fiction to think about race and class in new ways and to look into different ways of holding power. Butler liked writing survival stories because it made him think about how small victories for people who already didn't have much power could change society. She had problems with sadness and not being able to write later in life. She died in her Washington, D.C. home at age 58. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.